Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready? F A I T H A. Yes. Sir. Now, let me teach you how to prepare to preach in different seminars. Use acronym, not acronym also. Yes, yes. Use acronyms. You can prepare anything. Let's start with F. Firm assurance in the in the word of God in extraordinary circumstances. Firm assurance in the word of God in extraordinary circumstances. The gift of faith gives you this firm assurance in the word of God in situations that are very difficult to believe. Okay. Yeah, but you keep believing, keep believing God. You, you find yourself in an impossible situation. Mm. See, uh, let me get started with okay. you. Okay, testimony. I was coming to Cameroon 2000, this is, um, 2010 from the US to my conference, my conference in October 8th. The week before that, I got a letter from the council of the city that had closed my church in two weeks. Because they, we were living on, my church was on the fifth floor, on the fifth floor of the building. And that they, 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 if there's emergency to evacuate us from there, it would be difficult. You need to, you need to comply, some compliance, to put some, some other things in case of emergency. And it can make two weeks. And I had to, I to fight them all over that week. Know what I did? I prayed, I called a lawyer to call them, and I flew with Cameroon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I said, I said, Lord Jesus, I'll go back and get my church open. I had it in my church. I'm going to cast it back conference. I didn't tell nobody in the church that they were about to close the church. Nobody knew. I came, I had my conference, beautiful conference. And when my child was saved, Amen. Amen. And I have to now, so, you know. Can you believe God in a moment where you don't know what to do? I have an option. You can't send a coming to come out for a conference. You follow the matter there. And the conference, the conference that is nearly, I've heard other speakers come from different parts of the world. My events about five thousand people coming to attend the conference every year. You know. So I had a choice to cancel and stay or to go by faith. So the moments in your life you need now the faith to believe for something all that God can do for you. Amen. Amen. And this is part of ministry. You must get that so that firm assurance in what way. In moments when it look like you cannot go through. Can you believe God? Amen. Amen. Okay, so in Acts 16, 23 to 25, we move this. Acts 16, 23 to 25. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Having received such a charge, he puts them onto the inner prison and fastens their feet in the stocks. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chain were loosed. Go to 
kitchen, okay? I said I made breakfast from one or six, from one, from one or eight. Okay. I made um, some eggs, fried plantain, and then uh, eggs, fried plantain, and then uh, we have it. Are they fried plantains? Of course. Yeah, I'll take a couple eggs. Okay, so Acts 16, 23 to 25, okay. So at, say at midnight. What did, what did they do at midnight? Now, they had a death sentence. They were locked or in the maximum security prison. We were brought the next day a prosecution. Now, if they beat you the way they beat them, they cast them hmm, and they chain their legs. This is serious. We brought the next day. What would you do that night? After getting worse beaten. <laughs> and the next day, you know that you're going to kill you in a foreign land. But at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang praises to God. And they didn't did do that silent. The prisoners had them. Amen. 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 And this was not done for one minute. They sang until suddenly the place starts shaking. And the, the, the doors, they only had door, door quick because the place shake and the ground did not break. It's only the doors that break. <laughs> All the iron doors fell apart. Yes. Amen. 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 Can you pray and sing things after beating? Bit, you see, so. This is faith for supernatural in a time of serious crisis. Okay, let's start A. Acting in total obedience to the covenant promises of God, even in the worst situation. Acting in total obedience to the covenant promises of God, even in the worst situation. So the gift, so the gift of faith. The gift of faith. They are able to hold on that promise. They are holding on a covenant in a worse situation. The doctor said he has five more days to live. Or this or the doctor said, hold acting in total obedience to the covenant promises of God, even in the worst situation. Are you following me? Amen. So so because listen, okay, this is what you need in ministry. I think they ask that what about tea? What? I don't I, 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 I don't need that tea. I don't need tea. Yeah. Amen. 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 Can you still believe God? Now Lord gives you one week to ever to leave the leave the church. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. And because you're teaching nobody pays the phone. Bishop. God bless you. You know if you don't say five plantain and egg, we get well and a sardine, vegetable, so say. Okay, um can put sardine and vegetable together. Sardine and vegetable. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll be calling you ringing, it's going to work. Yeah, that phone is having a problem. Okay. Okay. God bless. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. It's a total obedience. Total total obedience. To the covenant promise of God. To the covenant promise of God. In the worst situation. In the worst situation. This is ministry, this is not joke here. Okay. This is what you're going to experience that will that will as you succeed in this situation, it promotes you. Amen. Amen. Nothing will change until you face crisis. Nothing, nothing will change until you face crisis. Do you know why there was persecution in, in the church in Jerusalem? When Christ went to heaven, you know, James, James, the brother of Jesus Christ, was already rooted in the in the Pharisee in, in the Jewish system, 
and the church, many believers grew, and all the apostles were just enjoying the good offerings in Jerusalem. God sent Petrician as Catholic. God sent Petrician as Catholic. Peter ran to Antioch. <laughs> all the believers scattered. And the church grew. Anywhere they went, they opened churches. Comfort is the worst situation in ministry. Mm. Comfort is the worst situation you find yourself in ministry. Comfort. You need to, no matter the blessings that God has given you, don't settle down. Keep pressing, keep pushing, keep adventuring, keep developing, keep planting, keep moving. That's why the Papa will, will not come to these established churches. Because they are now not comfortable. Oh, assistant pastor. <laughs> Do the counseling. <laughs> Second assistant secretary. Go to the meeting in my own to Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. The guy from the he settled. You see, it doesn't move nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing new, nothing, no more vision. Don't come to a point in your life where you cannot move again. You just enjoy. You know? Don't put yourself into a place of don't be comfortable. Keep moving. Keep pressing on. Amen. Amen. So but you need to pro hold on that covenant promises. The covenant promise. Covenant promise. I'm not saying God will Bible promises of. This is a promise God made to you. Write it down again. To the strength of my ministry is based on my personal covenant promises with God. The strength of your ministry is based on the covenant, the promises God made to you. The promises God made to you. I'm not talking about some Bible verses. Right? Okay. It was a part of Miss Victoria. Victoria lost her so much. And she has sacrificed a lot for, for Christ's sake. I mean, you, they love, you love us so much, you sacrifice a lot for Christ's sake. A lot. So, so, so those promises God have made for you, with you, or to you, is now your place to. to Take them back to God. It's a God. I'm still believing. God, I'm still believing. God, I'm still believing. God, thank you for this world. It will look like everything is turning upside down. God, I'm believing on you. I'm holding on your word. Amen. Amen. In Job 19, 25 to 27. You know what Job said? Job 19, 25 to 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the later days upon earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall be whole and not another. Though my brains be consumed within me. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He will stand up for me. Amen. Amen. So, do you have a personal covenant with God? What has God said to you? Every Christian that doesn't have a personal word from God has no future. I found myself. He must get the personal, he must get God sent to me. God sent to me. You see, I was very zealous as a pastor. I was pastoring my generation. I was in Malay village. I'm Malay for seven years. I was pastoring my um, my 40, Kandev 1, Kandev 2, Malende, Yoke, Penaboko, Matuke, with a bicycle. With what? Bicycle. 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 Everybody knew me. 
all my fans here are all one. The bicycle. For seven years. So one day I left from Yokoyahan, 9.30 p.m. Go to Malibu. It's about maybe three miles or something. The bush. In between that job, I had an audible voice. I have to stop my bike still in the night. I had somebody call my name. Say, I will take it to all continents of the world to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I stopped there. I can always see stars. No house, no body. Audible voice. So I stopped there. I had the person who called me say, you will preach in all continents of the world. This is me. I was earning to the 2,500 to the 2,500. It's in the five mm -hmm. by principle. They must, they must first cut the title for giving for the money. <laughs> they know the title for the give. And passport was about 50,000 at the time. I could only make passport because it took my two months, about two and two and a half months. About it. I got said to take me to all the nations, continents of the world to preach. But I believe that way. And I started preparing. I went back to my church. I said, from this day, no more pigeon in my in the church. No more what? Pigeon. 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 They took me to the there eh? <laughs> two times. So no more pigeon. <laughs> I said, I'm preparing my students who were taught to preach in pigeon. I need to prepare myself for my international audience. That's correct. By practicing in my church. Yeah. No <coughs> profession. And that's how my life will change. And then, this is the I guess, I. I is individual trust in the realm of world for something beyond ordinary. Individual trust in the realm of world for something beyond ordinary. So God gave me that in my word in that world, I believe it. I started working on that in my word. Individual trust in the realm of world beyond something, beyond the ordinary. Amen. Amen. Beyond the ordinary. So, why are you here? What's that name, please? My name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes. From where? From India. From oh, I like your shoes. You look like a prosperous picture. <laughs> you passed already. What do you do? What were you doing? I was doing one of the, I was doing business. Okay. What do you put a business? Bank business. Sorry? Bank business. Bank. School banks. Sorry? School banks. Okay, that's good. Am I? Okay. Am I? So but why why are you here? Why are you here? I'm here to answer my call. I didn't know that you're calm. Come on, man, are you following? Yes. Focus on him. I know that I'm called because God called me through revelation and through speaking to me. Okay. So that was what makes me convinced that I was called by God. Amen. Mm. It's important. It's the strength of my life. The strength of my life in ministry. In ministry. It depends on. Depends on what God said to me. Because then, everything will fight to counteract what God said to me. Satan mm -hmm. will make you believe that we are not called by God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because your faith will not work. You pray, nothing seems to happen. The sick are not healed. The more you fast, the more hardship. So that's how you show you call that God. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I need to go back and say, God, I believe your word. You spoke to me. Does that mean also? God, you spoke to me. I believe. Because ministry will have challenges that will want to prove you wrong. It is that, that covenant word that God spoke to you that became your backbone. Where you say, God, Satan, you're a liar. I heard from God. Amen. Amen. In Genesis 22, 7, 8, and 10, 
seven, eight, ten to eighteen. <coughs> yeah. The other is doing two seven and eight plus ten to eighteen. Yeah, um mm. God spoke to Abraham to take his son for sacrifice. And that boy was 11 years of age. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. How old was Isaac? Yes, yes. How old was Isaac when he was sacrificed? Yes, yes. About 13, 13. <coughs> it was about 13 years of age. 18. Sorry? He said 18. 18. Amen. The pastor, you know, it's 13 years ago. From when um, he was born, and that is your 13 years ago. Okay, listen now, amen. amen. So, Abraham had that voice and took him for sacrifice. And um, two things happened here. The first thing is, the good thing that this must be sure he heard from God. You take your soul, all this soul, for sacrifice. You must be sure that from God. You didn't even tell the wife. Okay, okay. They could have, imagine if, if to leave was sacrificed, I would have come and face, face Sarah and Charles. Then Abraham believed God took him. This boy was 13 years, you know, tied him, placed on the altar, then took a knife. Abraham! Wow. Now, turn to that verse. Um, verse, verse 12, if I did. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withhold, withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Are you ready? Yes. So, the earth be blessed. Amen. So we see here that Abraham had to believe God for this final word. And at the end, he got this covenant promise. I wonder if I see the stars and the sun. The stars stand for Israel. The sun stands for the Gentile nation. Okay. You are seen as the stars, the promised seed, the nation of Israel. So Abraham had two types of sons also. Mm -hmm. The first class, the stars, the one class, yes. the sun. Okay. So your children will be as the stars and as the sun. Amen. Okay. So we see that they're going to get students as the sun, the stars as the sun. Okay. Amen. Amen. So what 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 word are you running with? Look at this place, man. The anointing will not flow because of scriptural reading, because of scriptural quotations. Hmm? <laughs> okay, you can quote all the Bible. <laughs> okay. It's because of what God said to you. Read the Bible, okay? But now, hear what He said to you. Amen. Amen. I read the Bible every day. Amen. Amen. For information to teach, but to hear God's voice. The anointing will not be true. All the verses have been memorized. No. They are very good to strengthen your heart and soul. For your holiness, for your personal strength. The ministry is not Quotations. Okay, it's a quotation. It's a quotation. Mm -hmm. There's a word in you. <clears throat> There's a word God has spoken to you. Continue. Because of what God said to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you talking, um, these are serious issues, eh? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You can quote all the scriptures, the signal will be healed. 
What has God spoken to you about your ministry? What word are you running with? You must get a word, it's a personal word. Personal word. Personal word. About my life. About my, life. About my ministry. You know what God spoke to me? God gave me, you see? Me tell you the secret of my prosperity. I was in Tico Church. And I wanted to build a church there. The church is church there now. Okay? The old church was inside. After the send off, I was just when the Pastor Butake was there, the Trampagin, the send off. We had a meeting, and I was surprised that um, after all the meetings, finances, all we have now in the church bank account is 500 CFA. After I said, oh, 500, I took, I took over the church 500. Please. So, thank you, sir. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Sorry, I'm taking it. Sorry, see it. Amen. Are you following us? Yes, sir. Um, for us again. What does it say? 500 francs here, there. Yes, to go church. 500 francs. Now, in the night, the Lord said, My son, build a church here. I showed me the plan. I saw two angels, these beautiful angels. See, uh, angels are beautiful. These angels look like women. See, like women, I mean, with long hair. Like women, I already said that women, they look like. I mean, look like women, beautiful hair. So they came with a car. The car have no steering, they were just like a car. As one side of my life, one side of my life, I started in the middle. We just drove to the funny place. I saw a foundation, foundation that was laid, like a house foundation. I step out, I open my hand, they put piles of money. I mean, piles of money to take and build. So when I got up, I called my child and I said, we need to build a church here. So we brought a plant, 30 meters by 33, and we raised the walls finally. It was in August, the Lord said to me, take away this roof. If you need me to provide the roof for the night. Take away the old roof. Now, I was so naive, you know, I called engineer for the estimate of the new roof, about 18 million CFA. Mm. <laughs> 18 million CFA. Mm. Mm. 18 million CFA. Wow. Our offering time could be like 200,000 a month. My salary was my salary was now was increased to fifty thousand fifty thousand a month. They put the roof for eighteen million. You bring what? So announced in church on Sunday. The Lord said to me, "We should take away this roof. We break the roof." I was thinking that go to a hall to rent where we try to well, look for a hall, no place to rent. So finally, I used to use the old thing, build a shed outside. It was something to go to church even. Yeah. It gave a church outside. Yeah. And now 30 days fasting to our September. We meet in there every evening for 30 days. Mm -hmm. We pray with communion. That 30 days, our church grew from 200 to 700. Up on air. Mm -hmm. Every evening we meet there, we're singing. But can we just come and join us? Who can we come and join us? From 200 to 700 grow in one month. By October, we always mm -hmm. eat other people. See fellowship open air, 30 days service. 30 days. Every day, evening service and Sunday open air. And I got this woman came from Baptist Church, somewhere I already know her here in town. He said of 3 million francs. A Baptist Christian. 3 million CFA. The first church to enter our hands. I went to Douala, I brought that wood from Douala, and I started working on the roof. And in two months, the roof was the roof without a loan. We built the house, I didn't take a loan. Cash. Without a loan. Amen. Amen. Because God said to me, 
Say the vision. The vision. 